In this video, I'm going to show you how you can remove virtually any spot or stain from carpet in two steps or less. The first step is called spot removal. Spot removal is the process of physically removing spots and stains from the carpet. So essentially with spot removal, we are trying to take the contaminants out of the carpet. Now if spot removal fails, we can move on to the second step which is called stain removal. Stain removal is the process of using a chemical reaction to break down set-in carpet stains. As I walk you through these two steps, I'm also going to share two big secrets that professional carpet cleaners use when removing spots and stains from carpet. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be removing spots and stains like a pro. So let's start with step one, our spot removal step. Successful spot removal begins with a really great cleaning agent referred to as a spotter. Over many years, I've tested countless spotters, both common household spotters and professional grade spotters, and what I've found is that the absolute best spotter is a simple homemade recipe made with ingredients you probably already have at home. I call this recipe DIY spotter, and to make it, mix one cup of water with one teaspoon of dish soap, and two cups of 70% isopropyl alcohol. Now what I'm currently doing on screen is spraying the DIY spotter liberally over all the stained areas. In the intro, I mentioned I'd be sharing two big secrets of professional carpet cleaners, and here's the first secret. Professional carpet cleaners are using extraction to remove spots and contaminants from carpet. Professional carpet cleaners typically use high power truck mount units for extraction, but in this video, all we are going to do is copy them on a small scale by using a small wet dry vacuum. So now that we have applied the spotter, we can use the wet dry vacuum to extract the solution and contaminants from the carpet. If you don't own a wet dry vacuum, I'd recommend getting a small one like this. It's powerful, compact, and easy to tuck away into a closet when you're not using it. Another option instead of using a wet dry vacuum would be to use a carpet spot extractor. Now we've just finished one round of spot removal and it will typically take about two to three repetitions to fully remove most spots from the carpet. So what I'm going to do now is apply the DIY spotter for a second time and this time I'm going to lightly agitate the stained areas with the tip of the vacuum nozzle. So after applying the spotter, with the wet dry vacuum turned off, I'll just lightly agitate the stained areas to try to loosen the contaminants from the carpet fibers. Then using the wet dry vacuum, we can once again extract the solution and contaminants from the carpet. Now after a couple spot removal repetitions, we can see that the stains on the right appear to be set in stains. I can tell that these stains are a lot lighter and that we have removed a lot of the contaminants, but I can also tell that some of the dyes and pigments from the beverages have permanently bonded to the carpet fibers. These are called set in stains, and I'm going to show you how to remove them in part 2 of this video. Now we've just completed two repetitions of spot removal and I'm going to do a third and final repetition in the areas where I feel like I am making progress. When we're finished with the spot removal step, it's important to do one quick rinse with water to remove the soap residue from the carpet. To do this, simply spray some tap water over the affected areas, then extract with a wet dry vacuum. The reason we need to do a rinse with water is because of the dish soap. Dish soap is a really great cleaning agent because it attracts dirt and soils. So that's great when we're using it for cleaning, but if we leave a soap residue behind in the carpet, it will continue to attract dirt and soils. So over time, you may start to see some re-soiling of any areas that were not rinsed. When we're totally finished with step 1, it's best to allow the carpet to fully dry before moving on to step 2. If you want to speed up the drying time, you can place a dry towel over the damp areas, then stand on it to absorb some of the excess moisture. Now that we've successfully cleared as many contaminants as possible in step 1, it's time to move on to the stain removal step. Earlier I promised to share two professional carpet cleaning secrets, here's the second secret. Hydrogen peroxide is a professional carpet cleaner's best friend 
and it's the key ingredient when it comes to stain removal. When dealing with set-in stains, I always use salon-grade hydrogen peroxide known as 20-volume clear developer. You can find a link in the video description below to purchase this product. When working with hydrogen peroxide, it's always a good idea to wear gloves and to avoid getting it on your skin. If you do get it on your hands, it can cause slight skin irritation. I've added the hydrogen peroxide to a spray bottle and I'm spraying it liberally over all the stained areas. After adding the hydrogen peroxide, I am also going to add a few sprays of household ammonia cleaner, maintaining a ratio of roughly 3 parts hydrogen peroxide to 1 part ammonia. When that's done, we can cover the stained areas with a piece of plastic wrap. Then place a pot of hot water on top of the plastic wrap. The water temperature can range anywhere from lukewarm to 70 degrees Celsius. For this first attempt, I'm using lukewarm water, which is about 40 degrees Celsius. Everything is in place and all we have to do is give it some time to allow the chemical reaction to break down the stains. The amount of time it takes really depends on the type of stain and the water temperature. The hotter the water, the faster the stain will break down. It's now been 30 minutes and we can start to see that the blue stain is nearly gone and the other stains are starting to lighten in color. Let's cover them up again and give it some more time. Here's what it looks like after an hour and a half. We can start to see that as the water temperature cools to room temperature, the rate of reaction slows down. And to prove that even further, here's what it looks like after two and a half hours. We can see that the lower water temperature is less effective on these three stains. Let's attempt this process again, this time using water at 70 degrees Celsius. Follow the same steps. Apply the hydrogen peroxide. Apply the household ammonia. Cover the stains with a piece of plastic wrap. Then to achieve 70 degrees Celsius water, Add two equal amounts of water, the first part should be lukewarm and the second part boiling. I'm combining one kettle of comfortably warm water with a second kettle of boiling water. Additionally, cover the pot with towels to insulate it and prevent rapid cooling. Here's what the stains look like after 30 minutes. This is after an hour, and this is after an hour and a half. It looks like the stains have mostly come out of the carpet, so I'm going to move on to the next set of stains. It's important to note that throughout the stain removal process, the hydrogen peroxide gets consumed in the reaction. So we started with 6% hydrogen peroxide, and as it sits under the hot pot of water, it breaks down from 6% to 5% to 4%, and at a point it becomes too weak to break down most stains. This point is usually reached at about the 2.5 hour mark. So if the stains have not disappeared after two and a half hours, use a dry towel to absorb and remove as much of the weakened solution as possible before adding new hydrogen peroxide and ammonia to the carpet. I have just one final step to share with you, but before we get there, I want to say thanks for watching this video to the end. I've been working on developing these two steps for a long time and I'm really excited to share them with you. I hope that these two steps help you remove nearly any spot or stain from your carpet and I also hope that this information helps you save money on both professional carpet cleaning services and on products that don't work. These are the 5 items that we used in this video. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I've recommended, I'll post Amazon affiliate links in the description below the video. After we've removed all the stains from the carpet, we can do one final rinse with water to remove the excess hydrogen peroxide and ammonia from the carpet. To do this, spray the affected areas with water, then extract using a wet dry vacuum. You can see that there's a tiny red spot remaining in the carpet. This is because I missed spraying this area with hydrogen peroxide. But other than that, the results look really good and we were successful in removing all 14 spots and stains. This video is intended to supplement an article on thestainguide.com. A link to the full article can be found in the video description on YouTube.